On this show, we have seen Moorish sovereign citizens, female sovereign citizens, male sovereign citizens, well-dressed sovereign citizens, and crazy-looking sovereign citizens. But have you ever before seen a sorcerer sovereign citizen argue the right to travel in court? Probably not, but that's what we are going to watch today. Thank you for joining the Attorney Audits Agitators. I'm Joe Palmetto, Joe the Lawyer. Great video coming up for you today. Also, in case you didn't know, I recently released a book called Sovereign Citizens Deconstructing, Decoding, and Deflating the Sovereign Citizen Movement. My link for the book is in the description below. Go ahead and buy it on Amazon. You can get a paperback for $14.99 or a Kindle version for $9.99. It's tons of fun. We'll answer most or all of your questions about sovereign citizens. Now, before we watch this video and after you bought my book, Book. Raise your cup, your glass in the air. Cheers with me. It tastes better when we sip together at the same time sip. I have Diet Coke. I hope you have a tasty beverage as well. Cheers. Good morning. Uh, I want to follow the cases for Mr. Dennis, please. Calling up page 7 to 37 of the traffic calendar, William Dennis. Good morning, Your Honor. Deputy Prosecuting Attorney Sarah McNamee for the state. Good morning. My name is William Allen Richard Sequesi Megesa Cruz Dennis. I stand before you today under duress and I object to entering your area of the courtroom. But I will do so out of respect for you as a person and not as my true authority, as I am a sovereign child of God. Before I enter your area of the courtroom, I respectfully ask you respect my sovereign teachings and beliefs as well. As a sovereign child of God and a member citizen of the legal and internationally recognized Polynesian Kingdom of Atui, I do not fall under your jurisdiction. That said, should I enter your area of the courtroom to continue this conversation regarding my motions to dismiss all charges or to remove my case to federal court? Yes, you may. Everyone, please. Tell me, tell me, uh, it, we have seen a lot of crazy sovereign citizens doing this show, but this is the first time I've seen a sovereign citizen walk into a courtroom with a freaking staff, and we're not talking just a regular staff. Oh no, this is a sorcerer's wand. I believe what we are dealing with here is a sovereign citizen sorcerer. Somebody please tell me which J.R. Tolkien film did this guy walk out of? Is he the Lord of the Rings or the Lord of the Idiots? I'm sorry. <laughs> He's a sovereign citizen child of God. He says his name is William Allen, blah, 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 Dennis, um, from the kingdom of Atui. And he is only in court under duress. He doesn't want to enter into the well of the courtroom because, as you all know, as you all know, that would give the court jurisdiction over him. And by God, they don't have jurisdiction over him. Uh, he asked the judge if he can enter while still challenged jurisdiction and this judge who if you caught it there he rolled his eyes and he said okay ladies and gentlemen this one is going to be good good morning mr dennis good morning um we're here on your motion to dismiss filed in on pages 9 through 10, 12 to 15, 17, 19, 21, 23, 25 to 26, 28, 30 to 31, 33 to 35, and 37. That's on the calendar. Is that your understanding, Mr. Dennis? Uh, yes, all of them. Okay, all of them, right? Yes. Okay, is that your understanding? That is my understanding. Okay. Um, so what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is 4,750 pages of motions to dismiss filed by our sovereign citizen wizard. It keeps getting better. Mr. Dennis, I have read through your motions, and I just have a, you know, on all the cases. I just wanted some clarification. Basically, it seems like the arguments on all your cases are the same. 
jurisdiction. Yeah, it's the same. Basically, it's the same memo for all the cases. Correct. Okay. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have one argument for all the cases, rather than have you stand up like what twenty times and say the same thing. And I'm going to give the state of that opportunity to respond to that. So I'll give you a chance. I'll give you about five minutes to argue. I've read it, so I mean, if you've seen me, you know, I've worked on a case with you before, so you know I've read your your arguments and I've read your papers and pleadings. So I've read it, but I'll give you five minutes to kind of wrap up or to emphasize whatever you want to emphasize on that. Okay, then I'll give the state a chance to respond, and then, I, then, then you can have the final argument. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Dennis. Okay, so what we're dealing with here is 4,750 pages um, and 15 different filings to say the same thing. And the sovereign citizen wizard admitted it when the judge said that to him. Please stop wasting the court's time. What a nice and professional judge, though, who is who actually read all of this stuff. I mean, it sounds like he really did. Well, my motion is basically that I am a, I am a sovereign child of God. Okay, and I have God-given rights that are being denied at this time. I have rights regarding separation of church and state. I also have rights under uh, the Constitution of the United States, which protects my inalienable and unalienable rights to uh, not have my forward progress impeded to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I also have reference to... Uh, Documents that were sent to the Honolulu Police Department and law enforcement officers and treaties and, and things in effect that protect my rights. Uh, the question is the Polynesian Kingdom doesn't exist. We have a country code. We have treaties. We're recognized by the international body. My rights denied by the United Nations are the rights of indigenous people are being denied. So my human rights are being denied. All my rights are being denied by this court. That is why I'm requesting to go to federal court and have a majority of my peers. Okay. Basically, what he is saying here, folks, and you will see this soon enough, what he's complaining about, all of these inalienable rights and life, liberty, and happiness in church of state, no, no, that's, you will see, that's not what he's complaining about. He's complaining about the right to travel. Yes, the right to travel. The right to not have his forward progress impeded. I mean, how how entitled and selfish can you be to come in here and complain about getting pulled over without a driver's license like this with your wand and your cape and your your crazy arguments? Sovereign child of God, please stop now. I'd like to submit and give this to the prosecutor. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that your memo? Or? It's uh, the Honolulu Police Department Policy Law Enforcement Operations. Okay. Would you it like also to? includes uh, letters by the United Nations, Jason Rosario, to all the police chiefs and deputy police chiefs with asking them to cooperate with the Polynesian Kingdom of Tui during our transition into. Uh, Foundation. Are you requesting the court to consider those letters too? Because I don't have them. I, well, I just, I just <laughs> gave her a copy. I know you got. She got one, but I, I don't was, have I was, I was, I was to told that I could not submit any uh, things with my motion. I had a whole packet, and I was told by the clerk at Window Four that I could not submit any exhibits or anything in defense of my motion. It was strictly a motion. Here. Well, if it's an item of law, I will consider that. Factual things are not considered generally at motions. So if the clerk is correct in terms of factual exhibits or evidence, that's not considered an motion to dismiss. Items of law, like for example, you, you're educating me on the US Supreme Court decisions and so on and so forth, which I've read, um, that, you know, if you want to give me copies of that, I can get it through the library, but right. if there's things like that, you can submit. But if it's just letters, yeah, it's usually not part of the record because motions to dismiss are based solely on the record and what's filed and on the law. Right. So if it's letters, I don't believe they will be relevant well, this, to the this decision. Is, this is the drips from the United Nations on the rights of indigenous people, which all my rights are being denied, and uh, okay. your own constitution as well because you do defend the constitution. Yes, right? I do. Okay. And okay. you do defend the Hawaiian law as well? I defend the constitution. Not Hawaiian law. 
let's just say I am I'm going to defend the United States and the state constitution. Okay. We can proceed from there. Then my right stand is a with the other judge. I don't know if this guy think he thinks he got the judge there by talking about uh, the United Nations um, rights guaranteed under the United Nations. Listen, listen, sir. Um, international law, United Nations law, United Nations charter um, doesn't mean anything in a state court. But you're correct, and the judge, the judge owned up to it. He defends the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the great state of Hawaii, but not your UN law or whatever the heck you're you're citing to. Miss, I forgot. McNamee, Your Honor. Miss McNamee, you may proceed. Thank you. Um, the state would like to make oral argument that this motion is without merit, given our precedent that we must follow. Um, in State v. Fergustrom, the Intermediate Court of Appeals stated that the state of Hawaii has lawful jurisdiction over all persons operating motor vehicles on public roads or highways within the state of Hawaii. Um, and all of the offenses at issue here today are in regards to operating motor vehicles on the public roads of Hawaii. Um, the state does respect the native people's um, right to inherent sovereignty and self-governance. However, um, if you are, if Mr. Dennis is driving on the roads of Hawaii, then he is still subject to the jurisdiction of the court. And um, uh, HRS section 701-115-2 states that, uh, oh, excuse me, excuse me, that was the wrong section. Um, it's not in this memo. The, the, the jurisdiction of this court applies to anything that happens within this state. And uh, the right to drive is not an inherent right, it's a privilege and to use the roads. And the state would just like to argue that this motion, these motions, are without merit. Um, as recently as a few weeks ago, on July 30th, 2015, the Intermediate Court of Appeals um, issued a summary disposition uh, stating that very thing. So it's, it's Fergus Room is being upheld and um, this court does have jurisdiction. Well, look, you got to give this prosecutor some credit for getting up there and arguing against this guy with a straight face. But uh, you heard it there when she referred to all persons operating motor vehicles. The state has jurisdiction over all persons operating motor vehicles within the state. And that's the law in all 50 states. It's constitutional. It's been stated over and over again. This prosecutor even went so far to find state law that backed it up. So good for her taking this argument seriously. Uh, she took it a lot more seriously than I would and probably spent about three more minutes than was necessary explaining her position. And, you know, she even felt the need to say that uh, she respects the right uh, to inherent sovereignty and self-government of Native peoples. Listen here, um, ladies and gentlemen, not to burst anyone's bubble, but the, the federal and state law uh, of the United States of America applies in United States territories. The only self-governance that occurs is at the pleasure or allowance of state or federal law, meaning that the state or federal government has granted special rights to certain people. However, those can also be taken away. Um, I, I just need to state that because you can't just go around and say, hey, um, I have my own rights in this country, blah, 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 and now uh, law enforcement has to respect it. That's not true. But I digress. Let's get back to our sorcerer. Thank you, Ms. McNamee. Mr. Dennis. You got the last. You, you and I know that driving is is a right for all citizens. You cannot impede my forward progress in any manner. <coughs> You're also asking me to commit a crime, and I, I take umbrage to that. 
He just said, you and I know that driving is a right for all citizens, sir. Uh, you and I know that driving is a privilege for all citizens. You need a license and it is not a right. When I came to Hawaii to get legal credentials, I had to first look at this Hawaii state of the United States. In my opinion, it is not. I am an, I am an American citizen. And I, do not, and I know the Constitution that Hawaii was illegally annexed into this country as part of the United States. You're asking me to take credentials for a state that I do not believe exists. Doing so is committing a crime against my God, against myself, against the Hawaiian people. I will not change who I am as an individual. And asking me to change who I am, this is serious egregious against me. And I do not respect that. So I refuse to commit a crime by taking credentials with Hawaii until I have irrefutable proof that Hawaii is the state of the United States. It is also noted, if you notice, I have not actually committed any violations. I have not been stopped for anything except for the color of my plates. I could have my own name on there for that matter. I don't have to be part of anything. I have a sovereign right as a child of God, protected by the United States Constitution, protected by the Declaration of Independence, protected by your own Pledge of Allegiance, because the United States is a republic, and a republic respects the inalienable and unalienable rights of the individual and the God-given rights of the individual. So any other ruling short of that indicates the United States is not a republic. And therefore I question again, who is the United States? Who is Hawaii? I have no proof. You have given me no proof. I've given you everything. I've given you my life, my history, who I am, and how I support people. I unite people. I don't separate people. Every act against me is like an act of war. You're trying to make me something I am not, and I will not change no matter how you rule today. Because I stand in my truth as a sovereign child of God. So if you want to disrespect God, go for it. Because if you judge me, you will be judged as well. But I stand by who I am and my decisions that I make as a sovereign individual. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Dennis. Is that really all that you have to say? Listen here, sir, no matter how you want to frame history, Hawaii is a state and driving without a license plate is illegal. You said that you were only stopped for the color of your plates. Boy, would I love to see those plates. Driving is not a right. And yes, the state can impede your forward progress when you are breaking the law, sir, and it doesn't matter how many wands or sorcerer stones that you have. No, I'm not judging that. Well, maybe we do that, but uh, we are here on a motion to dismiss. I'm not here to determine whether you have committed a crime or not. That's not an issue with the court. The issue is whether or not uh, there is significant, uh, there is a basis to dismiss the cases against you based upon your claims that yeah, the court has no jurisdiction based upon your claim that the, um, the charges violates your constitutional rights um, for freedom of travel, as you have cited, um, and also, I guess you've argued about being a you know, sovereign child of God. Um, based upon the arguments of counsel and a review of the motion that was filed and the arguments made, the court finds that the court does have jurisdiction in this matter, the court does understanding that the um, state in uh, cases of State versus Ferguson and in State versus Jim um, have specifically held that uh, this court has jurisdiction on traffic matters regardless of the sovereignty issues or allegations made by defendants. Uh, the court does recognize those cases and recognizes the decisions uh, based upon that. Uh, based upon, uh, also, the court addresses on your, on your claim that the, the um, citations violate your right to the constitutional right to travel. The court finds that the constitutional right to travel, as under the cases that you have cited, um, specifically the last case that you have mentioned in your memo. Uh, 
Zobo versus Williams specifically state that the right to travel is the right to travel between states, or in some of the cases that you talked about, it was travel between the United States and another country. Uh, it does not talk about the right to drive uh, without any regulation in any vehicle. So I don't find that those arguments are, are convincing in terms of what the United States Supreme Court has said. In regards to your request for removal to the Federal District Court, I do not find that there is a sufficient basis for removal of those matters to the Federal District Court. Mr. Dennis, if you really if you want to follow through on that, you should be filing an action in the Federal District Court yourself and ask for the court to stay these proceedings. But the court on its own cannot send over things, something to the Federal District Court say so you take it. That unless there is a clear federal jurisdiction issue, the, uh, the, this court cannot just package up these cases and send it to the Federal District Court. Based upon that, the court will deny all your motions to dismiss. State to prepare the order, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you, you Mr. Dennis. I object. Do we have any other cases in the middle? Oh, yeah. Yes. Have a good day, Mr. Dennis. Have a good you day. as well. I'll see you. No, you won't be in heaven. I will be. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Dennis, do you want to wait for your people? Sure. What a truly nice and professional judge who gave the sovereign citizen sorcerer all, gave him all the time that he needed, okay, to get up there and do his wizardry and spit out his magic words. And at the end, all this sovereign citizen wizard has to say to the judge is, you won't be in heaven, I will be. How rude. And that gets to the root of what I've always said and will continue to say about sovereign citizens is they are selfish. They see the world as revolving only around them. Okay, the law doesn't apply to them. It applies to everybody else. Wow, talk about selfishness, talk about narcissism. These people are a nuisance. Thank you for tuning in to Attorney Audits Agitators. If you would like to see more of my opinions on sovereign citizens, buy my book. The link is in the description below. Sovereign Citizens de Deconstructing, Decoding, and Deflating the World's Most Notorious Anti Government Movement. Sovereign Citizens, the book written by Joe Pometto, available on Amazon on in Kindle, in a black and white paperback, and also in a full color paperback. The link is in the description below. Thank you for joining me. Everyone have a great day.